Now there's a flip side, and that is that energy production is also a, a major water demander. Um, and uh, this slide here just sort of shows where we as a nation get our, our electricity um, <clears throat> by source. And what you see there is the renewables weigh in at a, you know, something on the order in 2002 of about 10%, 9% of the, uh, of the total electricity that we generate in the country it comes from renewables. Um, everything else there, uh, virtually everything else on that diagram is so-called thermoelectric energy. You, uh, you, you heat up water or something else and you uh, use, it, use steam or some other mechanism to drive, uh, to drive uh, turbines and generate electricity. Um, in the process, you need cooling water and the like. And uh, so 90% of the, uh, about 90% of the U.S. electrical generation is uh, thermoelectric and, and therefore, you know, is a major demander of cooling water, of water for cooling purposes. And then also, it, at least in the early 2000s, most of the U.S. renewables are still, um, are still hydroelectric and you know, you have to have water available at the right time in the right place in order to uh, pull off a hydroelectric generation. Um, and so, you know, that's how we, get, how we get our energy, our electricity in particular. Here's how, as a nation, we, um, we well, what we use water for. And uh, what you see up there is that the two big slices of that pie uh, both at coming in in the year 2000 at about 39% of the total water withdrawn for various uses um, are thermoelectric power generation and irrigation. So, you know, electrical, and electrical generation is, you know, is tied for first place in the, in the country and, and uh, for in terms of how much water they use, uh, and they're tied with irrigation. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, and notice that hydropower isn't, isn't included here. Now the thermoelectric uh, water, the water used for that, typically most of it goes, actually goes back into the stream or lake or wherever it came from, but in the process it's been warmed up and often has, has been degraded in quality. So there's a price to be paid for that large use of, of thermoelectric. As a, if you think about it in terms of water, well, maybe it's not as, uh, maybe it's not a, in some sense a big draw on the water supplies. Turn it around and think, what if the water supplies are, are um, threatened or, or degraded? It starts to hit the thermoelectric in a huge way. So, um, so, you know, the point I'm making is that, um, that our energy system and our water systems, the same water system that gives us water, drinking water and, and irrigates our fields, are inextricably linked with energy and power production requiring water in huge amounts. And our water production and, uh, and the various steps in the water supply cycle requiring huge amounts of energy. You can't change one without affecting the other. Yeah, moving on to uh, just sort of going back to the issue of climate change that Mickey was talking about. I'd just like to show you two quick slides. This one shows, you know, sort of at, when all is said and done after you take the climate change projections that are available out there and that were uh, described and, and analyzed in the IPCC assessment a couple years ago. Um, and you run it through, you, you basically look to see how much water uh, in the end after evaporation, after precipitation, those sorts of things is available. It runs off and might be available for various uses including thermoelectric power generation or hydropower generation. Um, what we see here are, is sort of the average of many different projections of the future reductions in the runoff uh, mapped over the globe, over so the land surfaces of the globe. The negative reduction 
I, you're using negatives and positives yeah, here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Reduction, yeah. so. What this means is that the negatives here mean that there's less water. So the okay. warm water, the warm colors here are places warm that are reduction. drying up essentially yeah. uh, to, the, to these various amounts. So for the western U.S., you can see the, big, you know, the obvious big blob there that ranges anywhere from minus 30 to minus uh, to 10 percent from 10% to 30% less runoff available. Why the, why the increase in North Central Africa? In North Central Africa, that has to do with the warming of the Indian Ocean and more precipitation okay. ending up there. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, and you know, to keep with my theme of energy and water, you know, when you start reducing the rivers, the river flows in the west this way, you're going to be challenging the thermoelectric generation because the water won't necessarily be there when you want it to be there for cooling water and for, uh, for the uses associated with the ther thermoelectric. And then hydroelectric, it hits right in, yeah, obviously it hits right in the soul of, of hydroelectric. Here's actually projections from not the average of the IPCC numbers, but what, what I'm calling here a low warming scenario, which is to say this is about as good as it gets in current projections, uh, as positive as it gets in current projections. Um, we've, this is some work we did at Scripps in the early 2000s, linked one of the, the uh, this is sort of the best case scenario among the, the, uh, the projections that are out there currently, linked it to water supply and hydroelectric power models. And what you see here for various river basins at various points, projections into the 21st century, are reductions now, now this is reductions, uh, in the uh, hydroelectric potential uh, available because of the, you know, the amount of river that, water that's available and when it's available. And you can see that for the Columbia and, and California rivers, we're talking on the order of maybe 10% reduction in hydroelectric power generation. Colorado is, gets hit pretty badly, if, if you recall on this slide, you know, it sort of sits more in the heart of that big bl ugly blob in the western U.S., and you end up with uh, reduction, huge reductions in the hydroelectric power generation. So, you know, again, to reiterate, energy and water systems are, are you know, intimately linked. What we do to fix our energy system or to improve the efficiency, the, uh, the output of our electric system, uh, we have to take into account that it will influence the water system. Um, similarly, what we do to fix our water system, we have to be taking into account that it bears very directly on how much energy will be available. And then you toss climate change in the mix and it all gets very muddy. So I, I'll take questions after the, uh, the next speaker.